It is the end of the world as we know it, or at least that's kind of what it feels like at the moment. But what role does technology play in helping us solve everything from pandemics to climate change to tsunamis? Well, we have Jesse Hughes, creative technologist, joining us, and Claire Riley from CNET. And Claire, you, you actually investigated this. You've got a brand new series called Hacking the Apocalypse. Um, of the various different things that can end the world, what is the, the the methodology, I guess, that technology shows, I guess, the most promise? It's most likely to help us, Claire. Okay, one, <laughs> I swear I didn't start this. Um, I promise you it wasn't me. We actually had a clip where I'm speaking to one of the world's leading pandemic preparedness experts at Johns Hopkins University, and I sit down with him and I was like, is there a chance that we could be caught off guard by some sort of mutant bat influenza and he no. was like yes yeah and then he was like yeah and we probably will be and I was like great fun thanks Wh- for doing did the you interview record with that? us uh that was July last year um then I caught up with Dr Eric Toner again in March and I was like hey Eric um stuff not going so great uh <laughs> can we have a bit of a chat and it was so surreal to have this one expert that we spoke to middle of last year then sort of the start of the pandemic as it was just hitting off and he was saying it was going to be a truly catastrophic event then I caught up with him and I think um very end of June or early July and he was telling me that we're going to be wearing masks for years in the US at least um mm. he also told me that I should move home uh <laughs> so that was great it was super fascinating fascinating to kind of speak to someone about this hypothetical event and then it suddenly all came true. Uh, as far as what tech can help us the most with, I mean, the pandemic episode is a really good example. We've seen, obviously, the huge push towards vaccines, but there's also a whole bunch of different ways tech is looking at the problem. So one of them is the Summit supercomputer, which is created by IBM and until very, very recently was the fastest supercomputer in the world. And what they've done is they've modelled the virus and they've simulated different drugs to see how they bind to the spikes on the outside of the virus, which cause a lot of the problems. So rather than having to do all of these tests with individual drugs, and do human trials, they just ran it through a supercomputer. They found at least 77 drug compounds that could actually be the most effective in fighting this virus. And then they take those drug compounds and then they run them through human testing rather than testing every single drug known to man, which is going to be a really slow process. So it's really fascinating the way technology is actually a solution for something that you think is completely insurmountable. We left that video shoot with Eric Toner at Johns Hopkins. We left it and we were all really scared. I remember our video producer was just like, I don't feel good after this one. Mm. Um, This one freaks me out. And here we are and you've got technologists and scientists and researchers actually doing the work to get us out of it and yet it's still really difficult for Barry Sixpack to wear a mask. So obviously... I mean, Everyone has different skills. What is the area where technology's promise is most overblown, where really like of the different things that are being worked on right now, the, like technology and that, that Silicon Valley offers nothing, there's, there's no hope? Well, I think it's when you're talking about technology for grand social solutions, right? Social media is the big technological promise of our generation, but we've seen social media has a real problem with propagating and amplifying conspiracy theories uh, because of the democratization of news and democratization of information. Suddenly anyone can be an expert, but that makes it really dangerous when you say, do I trust Dr. Fauci or do I trust the next person down in my tweet feed, Auntie Beryl, who's telling me that actually I can take this weird mouse drug and it's going to make me 100 100- hundred times better, you know? So I think that's the problem that technology has. And that's what we've really seen in kind of disastrous situations. It's not necessarily a solution. Some of the easiest ways to break into, you know, this high level tech solutions is just through people. It's social engineering, it's people. And so, yeah, it's just interesting what you're saying, Claire, like how simple it is. The easiest technology is to wear a piece of cloth over your mouth right now. <laughs> and we can't yeah. do that. So, <laughs> you know. So we, and it was just, yeah. yeah. If the solution was like an astronaut helmet, if everybody had an astronaut helmet, then we'd be like, oh, okay, cool, we've got a solution. But it's literally the fact that it's a mask. That's just, it seems too simple and too, I don't know, oh, no, I can't do that. It's interesting we have this idea of this futuristic world that oh, all these glitchy kind of digital solutions and astronaut helmets are going to save the day when it's like, well, 
you know, we kind of have some pretty basic tech here that people can't even adopt. So. And it hasn't really changed in 100 years. You know, we spoke to a historian no. who was um, covering the Spanish influenza, the outbreak during 1918 and 1919, and he was saying that it was such a catastrophe then. But they, you see the pictures and there were, you know, there were the mass graves like we've seen around the world in news stories. But there were also people wearing masks and it was something really basic. And there was a big catchphrase at the time that spit spreads death. That was the big headline. And it's the same now. It's micro droplets, but it's the same thing. Spit spreads death. And it's a really simple solution, but it's something mm. that, you know, we have to be able to adopt for it to work. Yeah, I think we have this like ungrateful relationship with medicine and health is we just expect, oh, if we get sick, well, we'll just go to a doctor and they'll fix everything. Um, and so instead of prevention, which if you're talking about 1918, yeah, probably you're going to be focusing a lot more on prevention. Whereas we have this weird connection with, oh, well, if I get sick, I'll just go to the doctor and everything will be fixed and I'll be taken care of rather than you know, taking it as seriously as we should, where prevention should be the first line of defence. All right, there is lots more of this in the podcast of Download This Show. I will catch you there. See you next time. Bye, guys. Bye.